playing all the hottest music, yeah. Keep it locked, keep it locked. The bougie show, keep it locked. It's the bougie show, but keep it locked. We lie, tell us what you wanna hear When we turn up, you gon' turn up Turn around and tell a friend It's the bougie show, the bougie show Tell them it's the bougie show, the bougie show Yeah, 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 yeah Turn up, all around the world you gon' hear us Turn up, everywhere we go you gon' hear us It's the bougie show when you hear us Cause it's the bougie show, the bougie show Turn up, turn up Bougie show when you hear us Turn up, turn up Turn up, it's the bougie show when you hear us We're going live in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 Welcome to the Bougie Show Got a special guest in the building If you're an active porn consumer Then I know this adult entertainer in front of me you've seen before Probably stroking one of your favorite female porn stars He's nominated for 2021 Inked Awards, Male Performer of the Year. I refer to him as the Will Smith of porn. Ladies and gents, Isaiah Maxwell is in the building. That was a nice intro. Yeah, you know, I was coming like that. <laughs> oh, no, it's all good, man. What's good with you? Ain't nothing, man. How you feeling, Isaiah? I appreciate you coming, man. I know we're supposed to go down in I March. Know. Which, yeah, uh, I was like, I woke up, I was like, wait. <laughs> oh, you man, forgot today? I, 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 no, I was just, there was so much going on. Uh-huh. My schedule got changed and I ended up staying in Vegas. And then I Oh, like, you talking about in March? Yeah, okay. yeah. And okay. I woke up that day. Even today, stuff changed, man. Like, I had to do two back to back scenes and, like, push the time back a little bit, but I made them pace it fast so I could get down here. Oh, okay. Because I, pre- I appreciate it. How, how was your, um, how, so the day, how, what time did you start your first shoot? Um, my first scene started this morning at 10 a.m. And the second scene started at three. Mm. So you just take a lunch break in between? I had to actually go get tested. So I had to go down and get COVID tested and come back up. Otherwise, I would have just knocked it out back to back. So you had a long ass day. So after this, you you, you going home. That's it for Pretty much, man. And then I got to get up and do it again tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) Putting that work in, huh? Hey, man, trying to. Now, we're going to go right into it, man. Um, So now I know that you were uh, an agent prior to becoming an adult entertainer. Yeah. Can you explain to the people how that transition took place? And um, uh, what was it? I wonder if these former employees that you used to work with now uh, work. Oh, so, oh, I'm sorry. That's something else. I'll save that part. Go ahead. Go All ahead right. and answer that first. Well, um, I started off as an intern and uh-huh. it was for college. It was in order for me to graduate. And so I interned in my field of study, which was journalism. And it just kind of transitioned from me being a publicist to an agent. And um, the reason why I was behind the camera at first was because I never, my attention was never to be in front of the camera when I first got in. Okay. I, I kind of wanted to do behind the scenes. So if I walk away, I wouldn't, my hands would be clean. I could do another job. And okay. Have no issues with the resume. But the longer I stayed in it, the longer I fell in love with the industry. And then I started talking to a couple of the girls and they was like, you know, you should hop in front of the camera. You qualify. Right. And then um, it took me about a year of asking all the male talents what, what was their success, what was um, the stuff that they did wrong, right. and what would they change. And after a year of like just interviewing them, basically, um, I was like, all right, I'm ready to do this. And so hopped in front of the camera in 2013, and I was able to avoid a lot of the pitfalls early performers find themselves in the early stages of their career. What, and, and what type of, uh, you, are you speaking from a male perspective, right? Yeah, yeah. So definitely. what kind of pitfalls do they, can you give an example? Um, yeah, yeah. There's what do you mean by pitfalls? Um, there's the number one thing that um, get a lot of guys kicked out of the industry is the ego. And okay. like, you know, if you got a big ego before you earned it, then people will show you that you are replaceable okay. in this industry. I always remember we could all be replaced at any time. There's plenty of guys that want to do this. Right, right, so right, right. You leave the ego back at home. But um, besides that, you know, routine of just getting up, getting ready and making sure that you're good to go. I mean, a lot of things that I do to stay ready on camera comes from me preparing myself off camera. Uh, 
Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, don't you have a father that had played a, a, a major figure in the adult entertainment business? No, no. I'm a first generation oh, performer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. My father is very supportive so, as okay. well as my mom. But um, but no, nah, I probably had a couple of people that played my father. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so as a publicist, you did that. All right, so in detail, because I remember I, I, I saw where you were in an interview, you said, man, you used to walk down the street with these females, and they was like, how does dude get them girls? Right. At this time, you were an agent, you were a publicist at this yeah, time? Yeah, I was a publicist at this time, and I was taking girls down to radio interviews and like just giving them notes on what to say, what not to say, how to change it and look better for their um, public. Right. But, um, but yeah, the reason why I love being in the industry in the beginning was because I was just like this random kid with all of these hot women, and people would be like, yo, like... What do you do? And right. uh, at the time, I was actually working at Burger King. So, oh, that's what I was gonna get into. I wonder if the former employees that you used to work with at Burger King watch your performances now. Oh, a few do. <laughs> Definitely a few do. You know, I, um, I, I get hit up from my friends still from college and high school and all of that. But um, Burger King days are far gone. Yeah, man. where 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 were you from? I'm from Cleveland, Cleveland originally, okay, but okay. I did high school out here in Cali. Oh, and um, in college here as well. And this kind of made my way from school to the industry. Um, I have an issue with the game, like the lack of credit male performers get when it uh -huh. comes to popularity and pay. Now I know right. women have the vagina and the pretty right. faces, and are usually the ones, you know, they get the product, you know, and yeah. things of that nature. But um, I think the difficulty as the from the male talent to be able to perform, you know, um, when we talk about it, like you know, it's not that easy just to get your rocks off. Like uh, no. one of the female talents that I interviewed, she would say that you know men try to you know get them to continue to perform when you're changing scenes and stuff like that. And I wanted to ask you, what do you do to keep your erection, or do the women just say, hey? we like you so much and working with you we keep you going um one of my one of my go-to moves is like i have a vivid imagination i thank my mom for that okay because she let me be a kid when i was a kid yeah. and like i thought the sun was following just us right. until i was like 13 years old okay so like you know key to being a male performer is taking yourself there and it's like mental is more important than actually physical right. because if you check out mentally then your physical so, won't work mm -hmm. and so um you know i take myself to a fantasy with these girls and like if i'm like doing a game bang i'm basically imagining that we took her from the club and this is like a fun time and that's how i stayed for that but for like a one-on-one -on -one, it's always like some romantic situation or like um just like I found this girl in the street. It's like always a fantasy that I I wanted to play out, and I try to play it out during the scene. Um, how do you feel about the lack of credit that male performers get, and people just not being recognized on how much work it actually takes? I mean, it's it's kind of just understanding the product. Okay. You know, like um, I understand that the product is the women, right? And so, like when I'm performing with them. I, I'm showcasing them Like I try not to make The scene about me Like I'm not one of those guys That like to talk over the women Like The less I talk Means the more the girl is talking Right And if the girl is quiet I talk to fill up the dead air But As a publicist I understood that What I was promoting Was the female Right And so like When you showcase her then that girl is happy and then when she want to do other scenes and other projects she thinks of the people that won't try to overstep and take that limelight and that's how I get a lot of my shoots is recommendations and um, speak of people speaking highly of yeah. even if the interviews we've done this past week it's it's they they all speak highly of you with not even your, your name is you know what I mean so you're putting in work you know even male talents <laughs> gave you you know gave you your props I, I gotta let that be known I paid them good money to spread my no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you, does Isaiah still pay uh, prepare for a scene the same way he did five years ago? Absolutely. I get nervous before every scene, just like I did five years ago. I'm just very good now at masking it. And so... Um, why, why do you get nervous, though? I mean, you just never know. You just never know what the situation is going to be. I mean, it's still sex at the end of the day. And, oh. and so I try to just... I try to have it feel as natural as possible. So I let my natural emotions play out. What habits have you... Um, you you've You've... Uh, implemented into your preparation or have removed from your preparation since from the time you started to now? Um, definitely removed a few things, which is like 
falling in love on set. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So hold on, hold on, because I never hear the women say they fall. Yeah. Okay, so falling in love with the the physical form. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Or you know, this you know just during uh, after just having like during sex, sex stuff, like before, during, after, just vibing with the girl and just being like, oh damn, like she's really into me and stuff like that. Okay. But you actually come to find out these girls are just like Performer. making sure that yeah, that, you, see, that you're going to be good okay. to go and stuff <laughs> like that. So, so I was just like. Um, I was just like, all right, Isaiah, like just enjoy your time here and just like enjoy the girl. And then when when it's over, like if she want to do something after, let her initiate it. But but I mean, just let her do her thing. Like a lot of these girls are married. They want to go back home to their husbands wow. and stuff like that. Or they got boyfriends. So it's like a lot of performers at the end of their scenes always ask them, oh, you want to shoot some more after And they're tired. So yeah. it's like I let them breathe and let them do their thing. And then. So you just keep it G and, and yeah, be a professional man. and and and, and um, yeah, it's like I'm scheduled to have sex tomorrow, so it's not like I need to try to like yeah. fuck you every minute yeah. of the day. Yeah, like one of the misconceptions that people have of me is like I'm fucking 24 hours a day. It's just I fuck at least once to twice a day for right. studios, but when right. I'm at home, that's it. Yeah, it's pretty much me and my um, pets. Oh, do you do you have sex off camera? I do, I do. Okay. You know, it's just it's finding the time because um. You know, my energy is prominent when it's on set. And right. if I was to have sex off set a lot, then you'll you'll get fatigue. You get fatigue. And um, pounding your dick away, you yeah. know, you could scar up your dick like that. I'm glad you brought that up. So it does, it does. You have to, just like women have to maintain their vagina, you yes. have to do the same thing with the penis. Yes, absolutely. You know, if you like pounding it out or jacking it off, like, constantly throughout every day it could give you scar tissue and stuff like that which will harden in the dick and then if too much hardens then you won't be able to get hard you have uh. to go get it drained and have to let it recover there's actually procedures that will um help smooth out all the dead cells and okay. like kind of like revive your dick to kind of make it feel new again and um it's like with like those well, ice therapies and stuff like that. Oh, wow. But, but yeah, there's all type of techniques to kind of refresh your dick. And, you know, it's just things to look into when you're doing this all the time. Do you have to you get you have to get massages on your on your on your, on your stuff? Not at the moment. I'm still I'm still young enough for it to recover <laughs> fast enough. But I talked to the OGs and they're like preparing me for what's coming in the future. So I'm just like peeping game and taking notes. Um, is it a money thing or performing in front of the camera with good looking women that make you decide to live this life as an adult entertainer? It's 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 a, it's both. Make sure both. <laughs> yeah, more more so probably on the money side than the female side because you know um, I love all the girls that I work with, but um, you know only a select group is like my actual friends in the industry, and I vibe with them really hard. So. When I'm going to these sets, I understand that it's a job and that, you know, like we're we're here to knock out a project and create something good. You have an OnlyFans? I do. Okay. Is it majority of uh, um, gay men? Um, For me, it's a little cross of both because I don't cater to the gay fan base as much as they would like me to, you know, like... Um, I'm not a fan of like the ass spreading videos or like the male solos. A lot of my OnlyFans is just straight boy girl sex. And I even avoid the boy boy because I do that all the time on set. So okay. I just like y'all see how I interact with these girls one on one on some real like What do you mean me. by you do the boy boy on sets? Like anything with multiple guys and stuff oh, like that. Okay, like you, I just like I, I so I like a game bang, a DP, yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, like I get hit us. You want to do a game bang for OnlyFans? I'm like, nah. Yeah, because you <laughs> like, already yeah, go like, major. yeah. That's for a studio. Like, it's too many people sharing content. Don't really want to. That's why I asked you uh, because um, other male talents that I've spoken to, they right. say that you know it's majority. Because uh, I think Ebony Mystique, I interviewed one time, and I asked her, and I said, "Is it mostly?" Um, would you pay to watch a male uh, OnlyFans page? And she was like, nah, most, you know, mostly gay, you know, even right. the dudes that I spoke to, they say it's more majority men that right. are paying to subscribe. So that's the only reason I brought that yeah, up. Yeah, I would say majority is definitely men, but yeah. um, I have a great class of women yeah. that's in there that's okay. like, that are on the freakier side. You I mean, think the men are gay or are they watching just to see you sleep with the women that they want to see? You know, there's a lot of guys on my page that just want to see me bang out the girls uh -huh. and stuff like that. So like every time I'll put out an occasional solo or something right. by myself, the guys be like, nah, I don't want to yeah, see yeah, that. Like, okay. yo, like gotcha. keep it coming with the women. And I'm like, all right. And like I and I like to do it all for everybody that's involved because it's more than just those guys in my in my OnlyFans so I, I do cater I try to 
make sure I tackle everybody and give them give them a little something of what they want. So when you're uh, because you uh, do you are you a freelancer with these production companies? I see you have a Braz Brazzers. Did I pronounce it right? Yes, Great, yeah, Brazzers. Okay. Do you um are you under contract with them or is that something they just give you because you worked on set? Yeah, and you're just, just wearing it. Yeah, it's just something they gave me. It's a little chilly in L. A. Okay. So you know I had to yeah, keep this yeah, on you. the day, but um I'm not under any contract. I always been my own agent. Um. You know, I, I advocate for um, independent models and, and I still advocate for agents as well because I did it before. So I understand the heaviness of their job. And so the respect is definitely there for them. But for me, I used to be an agent. So, so you know for me, game. yeah, you know, I know the lingo. Yeah. I know the stuff. They they try to talk to me as if like I'm like a new recruit and, and I'm a bad employee. Right. So, um I'm better when I'm in control of like what I want to do. I don't really like the middleman. I like to know exactly what it said. I don't like smoke screen conversations and stuff like that. I don't. You don't need to put sugar on shit and tell me it's candy. Right, right, so, right, right. I feel you. Um, what, is there a difference with working with high profile female talents opposed to up and coming or the ones that are more absolutely. in underground? What can you give me an example of what one of the differences are? Um, you know, it's so funny. Like in a DVD there's four scenes okay and like they always pay the top model the most and then the three are what we call the filler scenes okay and um and when you have a girl like that I mean personally you know I like to work with the up and coming girls right because they got something to prove right. so their sex is a little bit more energetic uh -huh. and stuff like that when you get to like the high profile girls depending on which ones you could get girls that are like I know that I'm the look so you get what you get right and then you gotta kinda cater to like their sexual style which is just like kinda posing and right. just kinda like showboating them which is cool and all but that's why I prefer to work with the up and comings because they like I got to get to that spot uh -huh. there. So I'm like, yeah, I help you get right, there. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's, like, let's do this. <laughs> and then, and then there's girls that you work with that you understand why they're at the position. That oh, they're okay. Are and stuff like that. So. Okay. No, I was just, you know, um, April t 10th, you tweeted. Shout out to my family evolving their questions instead of quote. Are you still doing that? You know, job thingy. <laughs> end quote it's now how's the industry treating you <laughs> man I mean in the beginning I used to get walked up from my uncle and he'd be like you know you need to go to church with me boy <laughs> <laughs> It is time to stop the fuckery. <laughs> I'm just like, all right, Unc, I got you. When you first you. started. Yeah, yeah, when I first started. And now that they see me, they're just like, oh, how are you doing? Like, oh, okay, everything's good. Like, you know, because, you know, I'm in the, I'm involved in more stuff now. I, I brought a home in Cleveland and um, and I do stocks and stuff like that. So my conversations is more broader. For so them. they understand the brand now of it. Yeah, they understand what I'm trying to do. Like, okay. they understand that this is my cash flow. Okay. For bigger projects that I want to do outside the industry. So like they're more supportive. They, I'm not involved in the peanut gallery, which is like the drug side of the business. And you okay. know, there's very a small amount of people who do that side, and um, and this, that never was attractive to me. So, and I have an addictive personality, so I mm -hmm. know what would happen if I was to start doing drugs. Right. And I don't want to spend my money on drugs. Right. Like right, that. right. So, right. do you drink? You just drink. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had a drink since my birthday, which was back in March. But if I'm on a winning streak of not drinking, I just won't do it. But if I'm at a party, I I can handle myself yeah, as right. well. No, no weed. Um, end of the day, I'm okay. Like, oh, you so know. you just have a joint just to relax yeah. after, after you put in work and not yeah. during the day, yeah. like most. Yeah, people. it slowed yeah. me down. Like, of course, before I was on my way here, I was like, man, I wish I could smoke, smoke a, a joint, drink. but I was like, it'll slow me down and. And I, I, I need to keep moving. Mm -hmm. Like, I got to get this over with. So, at the end of the day, you just smoke a joint, eat your good meal. And yeah, like, that's you know, I walk my dogs, you know, eat my meal, smoke a drink. I have a drink, a drink. I feel you. At the end of the day, like, when I finish this interview, yeah. I'm going to get <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> now, that's good, though, man. You've been putting in work, though, man. You around here, man, like, everybody's seeing your face. How long do you plan on... Um, being one of the top guys and before you make that transition and say, all right, I'm done with being in front of the camera? Man, I feel like um, I got a few more years to go. Okay. Um, you know, I did work with a young star today. His name was Damien. And and I noticed that I, I have no problem passing on the success. Right. Like, he was a kid that flew in and, like, he's, he was known for having the long slong. And, right. like, they wanted to use him but have me in the scene in case of anything goes wrong right right but throughout the scene i was like yo young star do your thing and like you know like all right the camera want to be on him so right. i'm gonna just like be a supportive sex right. aide right and he wasn't scared of the limelight and stuff like that which is like sometimes i'll 
when a high ego performer wants to like have the limelight, I'm like, here, take it. And they be like, nah, you take it. And I'm like, well then why, right, right, why, right, right. why like why are we arguing over this? But um but yeah, there's there's young stars that's gonna come in. I hope I wanna increase the talent pool of black male performers and stuff like that. And I you know, I wanna have an abundance of people here because there's plenty of money to be made. You know? uh, I'm glad you block up uh, brought up black performers mm-hmm. and then the lack of some of some black performers I spoke to behind the camera have stated to me about you know they wish that they had a West Coast uh, what's the, what's the name West Coast Productions right where they had black on black porn it's yeah. all interracial now absolutely. Um, do you think that maybe possibly OnlyFans could be the route where they could create more black on black content? Or black and Hispanic content Or you know what I'm saying Like remember they used to have uh, Latin street hookers Black street hookers And things like that And maybe that would Create an uprise Or you just think people Are obsessed with the Contrast of the interracial I mean I think At the moment The obsession is real I, I OnlyFans is a platform So it wouldn't really I mean you could find Black on black content there I mean you'll find A lot of my black on black content okay. On my OnlyFans and me working with ethnic performers because that's not who I really work with on set. So right. when I'm doing my content, I try to do things that people don't normally see. Okay. But, um, you know, there's always sites that are trying to do it, but they just don't hold on to it long enough for it to take off. But, like, every time I get a message about would you like to shoot this black on black scene or this latina on black scene and i'm just like absolutely and i try to promote it out even harder than the scenes that i normally do because i'm i'm trying to get that off the ground as well like the interracial is here and it's going to yeah, stay yeah always going to be here so the uh as far as when you're shooting only um only fans content mm-hmm. um are you shooting it at your residence or is it usually the females reaching out to you and you come to their residence and do the same mostly my resident because i stay by myself okay so they come no- over there so do you, are you constantly changing the backgrounds and at, at that or how you doing or you just have the infamous black couch type thing yeah you know everybody um knows my bed now but um <laughs> <laughs> like we will people be like oh yeah you work with isaiah because i know where yeah. you're at and stuff like that and they never been to my place so mm-hmm. but i do like to switch it up based on the performer so if i work with a performer in my place before or we couldn't find a place or you know or she can't do hers then after the second or third time we work out rent out a hotel room or like rent out a location or depends on the performer and stuff like that if they're comfortable with being around i have dogs at my place they're always quiet but you know some people don't vibe with dogs right. so if that's the case then i'll go off location and depending it just depends on i'm always a case by case it's like sometimes i'm just feeling it and i'm like yo let's hire a cameraman i don't feel like holding the camera this time i really want to bang this girl out right 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 and um it just all depends on the situation, but I never have really one single format of doing anything when it comes to OnlyFans. Is it difficult for a popular male adult performer to have a regular girlfriend? Mm, I think you could do anything in this industry that you want to do. I've seen successful relationships. I've seen relationships that was phony from the start. Right. And I feel that, um, you know, if you put in the work, it's, it's like civilians. It's like, you know, like you, you're going to have the people that are in cubicles they're gonna have people that hit on them there as well and go out to the bar and stuff like that it's the same type of temptation ours is just more upfront because we're more upfront with what we want to do in this industry it's like yeah we're here to bang like so do you want to bang off camera it's like right. i got my girlfriend at home but but yeah i've seen relationships work for me personally I'm single because it helps me do my job better. Right, right. You know, I don't have girls that are, like, tiptoeing around me because they're scared of um, upsetting a girlfriend that I may have. Or if I was to date a high-profile star, they don't want her to jeopardize the work that they can get in the future and Uh stuff like that. Because I heard of girls that are higher up just being like, ah, she's too into my man, so they'll tell the producers not to hire her for stuff. But um, but yeah, I'm I consider myself the industry boyfriend. So it's yeah, just like, yeah, uh, hey, hey man, you doing your thing, man. I'm, yeah. Every time I'm seeing it, you know, you, you're putting in work. You are uh, you you traveling back and forth to Vegas and yeah. in LA. You been to my you been to, when's the last time you been to Miami shooting? Um, October, October. Oh. I was out there the first week of October. You shooting with Bang? Yeah, I was shooting with Bang Bros okay. and um, Legal Parno is out there. Okay, and um, I knocked it out with Victoria Cakes and Hazel Moore and Kyla Quinn and. Um, that Victoria cake scene was really fun. <laughs> you could see us parading through Florida as she just doing her thing. People came up to her, was knew who oh, she wow. was, and like she put on the show. It was real fun to watch. Um, if you could, uh, be, because being that you were an intern, publicist, and agent before, um, with with the porn, and when you do, you deal with PR companies now. Yes, absolutely, you do. Mm-hmm. 
And how is it beneficial to you? And do you recommend that to um, other Absolute, male talents? Absolutely. If you know what you want to promote, if you want to be bigger as a person, you know, you look into the things that make you bigger. Okay. PR agents are people that could do the work that you wouldn't normally think of doing. So um, if you have a product to promote or your, your image want to be bigger, you know, there's some of my go-to publicists that I like to recommend people to. And then there's other publicists that could cater to people that don't want as much. But, um, yeah, I still, I'm in contact with all these publicists just cause that's, that was like my lane in the beginning. Mm-hmm. So it was like, those was the people I was clicking with. And, um, I owe a publicist a quote today, so I'm going to do that. Right oh, after shit. That. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> if you could share one lesson with a new male talent, what would that be? Um, you know, keep your composure. Composure is what keeps me hired and stuff like that. There's always going to be things that tick us off and, you know, things don't go your way. Cancellations is just literally part of the business. I mean, you can't have porn without cancellations because... This is the only industry where you don't have to do your job and like people can't get mad at you for doing it. And like I can't I can't hold you to having sex. It's like if you don't want to have sex that then don't. So c- cancellations happen? Absolutely. And they happen because somebody's not in the mood to have sex that day? Is that majority of the time or I mean, it- yeah, you just wake up and you feel at odds with yourself and you are just like, yo, like not today. <laughs> it's just not well, I'm not feeling it and um I get texts from directors that be like, you know, like this girl canceled or canceled her trip coming into town or like, you know, a test pop dirty and like can't do anything. And so like there's just there's so many like plenty of just variables that could happen and mess up your day and you just gotta like chalk it up you pay for money to get tested and stuff like that it don't get reimbursed it yeah that's, that's right. just gotta chalk it up to the game so so uh as far as like have you ever seen males or even yourself cancel it's usually the women i think i yeah males definitely cancel um i think i'm known for not canceling the okay. only time i do cancel is when i make a mistake and double book myself oh, okay. and like um what I do in that case, I do have a principal rule because I don't like to cancel for the bigger scene. Right. I, I cancel by who hired me first. So if you hire me first, I keep your scene. And the next scene, I'll just take whatever like attitude they give me about canceling and stuff like that. I, I'm very sincere. I hate canceling. It really, right. really hurts me. But um, but yeah, it, it happens. And how, how much how much do you shoot a week or oh, say a month? I was say every, every, a week. Yeah, a week. Really. A week. Um, it breaks down to about six to eight scenes. Jeez. Yeah, I think in the last three days I shot five. Yeah, I shot two Friday, one yesterday with at night with Black Raw, and then two today back to back. You take a uh, Black Raw is that's their biggest thing is interracial, right? Yeah, they're yeah they're pretty really big. I like people. how they how they brand it though. You know, absolutely. They they spiraled open so many companies that want to like mimic yeah. their success, yeah. and so like. Black has definitely brought more income into interracial performers' pockets because it's just companies see that it work. And before Black, then you know everybody was putting us in do rags. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. had us saying Black Power and stuff like yeah, that. Just yeah. like just to rile people Typical love, but shit, yeah. but that wasn't attractive right. to the girls that was like the bigger name girls yeah. that we needed to work with, and right. other for us to be more successful. And so now that Black is out, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, we could do this in the elegant style, and I'm down for this and that. And so it it, it really helped us. Uh, the women that get chosen for that how do they go how's that go about because I've had some female talent tell me man I want to do black I want to do black is it just is it selective is is it requested by the I mean in the beginning it was definitely a look because um, um, the guy that started it all he, he had his type which was like blonde hair blue eyes right. and stuff like that but he ended up leaving the company and so it kind of like helped branch out into all types of women and stuff like that so they they're still pretty much into pretty females and stuff like that. You got to be very porcelain looking and like have a glow to you. But um, you know what I'm starting to see the trend is going in. It's like these companies are reaching out to influencers, and so it's not even necessarily girls that are in porn. Like I'm like I'll see a girl and I'm like, 
where, where'd she come from? Like, mm-hmm. I never seen her before. And like, I'm like, oh, I've been in the industry a while. And then I look her up and I'm like, oh, she got an Instagram following. Or, oh, she got a high Snapchat or whatever following. And I'm like, they brought her in because of that. Oh, so they'll get to skip the line just based off of that. Yeah. And like the influencers don't really want to work with the whole industry. So you'll see them work with Black or you see them work uh, with Brazzers. And then like, that's it. And it's just like, you know, they get a couple of influencers to help boost because that's great clickbait. Um, craziest thing you've had a talent request from you? Um, <laughs> you know, it, I can't think of anything off back. I would say the most recent that I had to deny was um, a pretty girl wanted me to like slap her in the face for her TikTok. And like, oh man! <laughs> and it was but like, they would have removed that anyways. That would have been considered violence. I, I wouldn't even know. I didn't even entertain, didn't entertain the thought. Too, I didn't huh? even entertain the thought because we're in such a um, we're in such an environment where it's like frowned upon. Now. Of course, so it was like three of us, and she was like, "Yeah, I want you to slap me, and then I'm gonna say harder than the other." And I was just like, "Nah, sweetie, that's not just me. to get just to get a, yeah, a, a, just to a get click, a, or a yeah, few. yeah, just to push your name up." And I'm yeah, no, nah, like, I wouldn't. And then they'd be using was, that against you. Yeah, 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 I was like, "You don't look at my stuff, huh?" And I was like, "I'm not that guy." <laughs> like. You know, there's guys like that that right. don't mind and right. stuff like that. And, and, you know, if I'm in a kink situation, but it was just wasn't that type of situation. So it was just, it came awkwardly. But, um, I mean, there's always crazy stuff that these girls ask for me to do. Like, you know, mostly their husbands ask me to do it. Like, yo, can you just bang out my wife and stuff like that? <laughs> 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 so, you know, it comes from all sides. <laughs> So hold on, these are talents, husbands? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, yo, my is... wife is into you, man. You wanna just knock out a content scene with her or like, you know. And they like to sit there and watch it? Um, sometimes. Yeah. I you know, I had one couple where I was banging the wife and then I looked to my ro- looked to my right and I I saw the guy um sitting in the corner just jacking off. I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, Well, let me focus right here. Like you do your thing. It's all good, it's all good, that's why. They cook me steak. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good, you know. Oh man! <laughs> wow, wow, wow! You ever done swingers? Um, uh, like been to a swinger party and did that? Um, no, because I don't have a girlfriend to swing with. Oh uh, well, yeah, but, that makes um, sense. Yeah, and then like, but I mean, I, that'd I, be cheating I, though on your end because if you walk in there and they think you're a regular guy, then how's this dude so comfortable? <laughs> you know, just slanging wood in front of this room full of people. Real. You know, <laughs> but yeah, I've been to swinger parties and stuff like that in the past. But um, that shit probably feel like. Nothing, right? Yeah, you know, there's this, you know, I become the performer, and it's like, you know, I, I, like I'm there to hang too. So, yeah. But but yeah, it's just like I I become the show, and it's like, all right, like I'm not, I don't want to bang out all of this for everybody. Yeah, like, yeah. I want us all to be involved. <laughs> like, uh, con- uh, uh, congrats on you too. I see you just got. I don't know if that's your first adult toy. Oh yeah, yeah. I we, saw it on Twitter. I just, you know, what I'm saying, I ain't like I went to fucking check the product out, but I'm just saying. Yeah, Doc Johnson um, hit me up right after I won Male Performer of the Year for X Biz in 2019. Okay, and um, you know they 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 grabbed a lot of us out of that um, award show actually, but um, yeah, they've been holding me down over there and just kind of like slanging my product while I'm like knocking out these things. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, man, that's a, that's a, that's a good look, man. That's a power move, man. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Kind of, <laughs> kind of get the girls a little. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do they like sh- shape out your shit? Oh, sorry, sorry, you God. Uh, <laughs> let me get that. Do they? Do, sorry, they will hit the cord. Do they? Uh, I oh, Jesus. Uh, do they yeah. shape out your penis? And then make the t- the toy off of that. Yeah, yeah, they put it like they put like a whole motor on your dick and like um like like you gotta stay hard and like let it rest in there for a little bit and they'll take it out and and then do the mode. I, I meet the staff that do it and nice ladies and <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all good. <laughs> I put my dicks and stuff before so. <laughs> 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 We, we, we got a bona fide freak in the building. Came naturally, man. It's like put your uh, dick in here. I'm like, okay. <laughs> hey, what's the th- the top three things on your no checklist? On my no list, yeah. Um, in the scenes, there's no anal play. 
Like, I don't like girls to rim me for studios, but it's not something that I'm opposed to. I Wait, like, what do you mean, uh, rim? Like, no anal play, meaning you don't want them licking your butt? Yeah, I don't. Oh, okay. I don't want no them finger licking, in the butt? Yeah, I don't want that. them fingering okay, cool. it or anything like right. that. And it's not that I'm against it. It's just I know that sells really well. Right. Like, um, it was a trend of black men, black muscular men bending over and, like, um, like showing their muscles while getting rimmed. And it was a big selling point for IR, but it wasn't my type of trend. Of so, course. like, if there's if that was to be done, it would be done for my OnlyFans. And, like, I rarely do it. But the only time I really do it is when the girl is, like, really into that. And she's like, that's what I, that's my thing. And I'm like, all right, I'm not going to stop you from doing your thing. Like, you can rent me. But uh, I can't do the fingers. I don't like anal play and stuff like that. Um, another no list is... Let's see. I don't have race porn. Yeah, like I'm not. I'm not going to say n words on set and stuff yeah. like that. You could say BBC. I don't mind that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, You know, like I, I like playing with that. But like, you can't call me the n word, or you could, you could say black. You could describe my skin color. I don't. Right. Know. But you. So you're not working with what is it called? Dog fart. No, I actually am. Oh, you are. Yeah, they, they just don't ask you to do that. Yeah, they don't ask oh, okay. you to do that. And okay. they stopped doing that a while. Oh, they did. Ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They, they, okay. they actually stopped saying BBC. Like um, oh. last year They was like Oh yeah We're not saying BBC On these sets anymore And stuff like that And I was like Well okay That's up to y'all But yeah That was the two scenes I shot for earlier today well, Oh okay One was Dog Fart And the other was um, DDF Which is a European company It's all high energy scenes But um, Dog Fart Was a company That I started with And so I got Got a lot of love for them Because they allowed me To get my um, routine together And get my performance together You know A lot of fans was definitely criticizing me when I first started because I had my up and down moments, but they was dog fart up, was and, up and down as far as what? You know, when male performers have a scene, there's three scenes I like to say male performers have. They have a successful scene where they're fully hard. They okay. have an up and down scene where their dicks are up and down. Like right. They get soft while they're fucking. Right. And then there's the fail scenes where guys just can't get hard and get sent home. So, you know, if you have too many fail scenes, you'll get pushed out the industry. But if wow. you have up and down scenes, depending on if they're, um, if you have more successful scenes that are consistent, you are allowed to have an up and down scene every now and then. Okay. But, but you want to have more successful scenes and just a, a couple of up and down mediocre. Scenes. Yeah, you know, and but you want to avoid the failing scene. So the the imagination plays a big part in it, like you said. Yeah, yeah. Mental. This is all a mental game for male performers because once you check out mentally, it won't. So work. all vaginas don't grip the same. It's like you really just have to lock in and like. And then also, I remember other male performers. They can't be concentrating on getting that nut. They got to make sure there's enough content being shoot. Absolutely, you can't just fuck the pop. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you know, our seeds is like twenty five to forty five minutes, depending on the company. And me in real life is like five minutes. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's real. That's real. <laughs> <laughs> like the average thing, right? Yeah, so you know, it like I get a girl that be like, but well, you can't go on. I'm like but sweet that's work yeah, <laughs> but you know to... like on a good day like yeah I could go all night like we all can but um but yeah that like, the performance is for the camera and stuff like that like that's not real sex is what we call it it's like opening up to the camera right. so I'm always at an angle and stuff like that but when I'm at home I'm like you could close your legs and mm-hmm. like, we could close in it's it's just us there's no cameras here right like, chill chill Mm-hmm. Um, if you could perform with a porn star from the past, an adult film star in the past, in their prime, who would that be and why? Mm, probably Jenna Jameson. Jenna. Um, oh, wait. Before I say Jenna Jameson, let me go back. Um, Pinky. Pinky. Oh, you would like to catch Pinky in her yeah, prime? Yeah, I wanted to catch Pinky in her prime. I wanted to catch um, Cherokee to ass in her prime. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, let me talk about the girls that I really vibe with when I was younger. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, yeah, Pinky. Um, Mocha was another one. Mocha. It was just like you ever got with Misty Stone? Yeah, Misty Stone is a. Great oh, you worked with her? Yeah, she's oh, okay. a great friend. Yeah, of I'm her. trying to get her, man. One, hopefully, one of these days we get her in here. And knock it out. <laughs> yeah, man. When she ain't here, she's an entertainer, man. She's she's still in the industry though. Yeah, absolutely. And when we perform with her, like. It's so funny, man. I do a lot of dirty talking, but Misty Stone dirty talking is a next level. I I take lines from her t- dirty talking. You mean talking. while she's performing? Yeah, while she's performing with you, she'll say some lines, and I'm like, oh, okay, I need to put that in my repertoire when I talk to these girls. I'm like, damn, that's a good line and stuff like that. And she just, she'll make you feel like you really on top. Like, like yeah, you the number one guy. Like, that's the type of performers male performers want to work with is the girls that make them feel like they're the number one at the moment that they're uh-huh. fucking. And, you know, Missy Stone is that 
is a great performer of like making sure she caters to the guy and making sure like there's nothing wrong with how she feels about you. She feels like she's really into you right. every performance and she got a man and everything like that. Oh, they're, she does? Yeah, they're good peoples and everything like that. But yeah, she's a great performer. Yeah, I, well, I didn't know she had a man. Mm-hmm. I He's a normal normal guy. In case, she, no. <laughs> in case her fans don't think so either. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, he's a normal guy. He's a real cool dude. And I haven't met him, but she talks highly of him all yeah. the time. So as long as she treated well, I'll, I'll praise his name too. If Isaiah could have dinner with one individual, dead or alive, and have a constructive conversation, who would that be with, and why? Um, Nia Long. Nia Long. Nia Long. You know that she she um I missed that time. You know I I. I too young she was the celebrity that you would 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 have liked to uh get down with yeah yeah she was like yeah I'm like you say i'm the will smith but like, I was, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, was, I was a big fresh prince fan and like you long i was like oh that's was, right she was on fresh prince yeah, now, 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 now. yeah you're right yeah you know so like you know I, I was a real big fan of hers kyla pratt was probably my first celebrity crush that's uh what show was she on again proud family proud family um, she grew yeah. into a nice looking woman, man. Yeah, yeah she, she did. did. She she really went into womanhood and so like, yeah, she she's aging like wine. But well, yeah. but it was somebody dead. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh no, I did say alive. Sorry. So what yeah, about somebody dead, dead though? Um if it was dead, I would let's see, let me think. Um I forgot it was dead or alive. Most people pick somebody dead. They don't pick somebody right, that's alive. But go ahead. Right, you know, um, what about a musician? Or what about an entertainer that you could see them perform in their prime? Entertainer, Prince. That's no okay, Prince. You know, Prince. Um, Af- um, any athletes even, that you would like to watch in their prime? Um, Jordan for sure. Okay, I, I didn't. <laughs> I I could have saw Jordan when he played for the Washington Wizards, and my mom messed that up. That's so, not the same. Yeah, though, but yeah, go ahead. yeah, it's still, but I, but but yeah, I would have loved to see him during the nineties. I wasn't a big basketball fan to so understand basketball back then, but I would have loved to get to know him. Like I seen Kobe and LeBron play, and all oh yeah, them, and like they're good entertainers, and I've been to concerts here and there, but. You know, I, I gotta still go see Earth, Wind, and Fire. And yeah, like, I got to see them. No, it was actually Frankie Bubby. I got to see. Yeah. Um, what were you jamming in the car when you pulled up? Um, I was playing a little um, Money Bag Yo. Oh, okay. And T Grizzly. I you listen to music before you get ready to perform? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, it puts me in the mood. Okay. You know, I, so it's not rap you're listening to. Depends on the girl. Like mostly, I'll put rap. It's like if there's a lot of guys on set, I'm rolling up there with my yeah. favorite rap songs yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like, I, I don't really notice the song playing until like I get to set. I have my playlist, and then it's just kind of just background noise. They give you your own room, like when you come in. Um, depends on the company. Like Black will give you your own room, and Brazzers as well. But um, other companies are just kind of like more intimate, and so we all know each other, and we don't really necessarily need that. You know, um, some actually prefer the. Um, togetherness over the separate rooms because it helps us vie with each other a little bit more you know we all have to be intimate with each other and it's just like if you're separate the entire time and then got to get together when it starts it kind of feels forced you initiate the contract uh, com- you initiate the conversation when you are uh, uh, on set if need to be okay. you know there's some girls that have no issues talking and um, there's other girls that are very shy and so you know I try to make sure they're comfortable I get to I ask them questions about their life so like you know when we when we start having sex I kind of try to figure out their vibes a little bit or talk about their do's and don'ts I have that conversation with every girl I perform with Um, the end goal for Isaiah Maxwell when it comes to adult entertainment do you see yourself as a director one day going back to being an agent What, what what do you see you know that's a good question my when i stopped doing agency work in 2018 to become a full-time performer i said that i'll get back into the agency work when i'm older because it's a game that you could do when you're older and not doing as much right the issue was i started performing more than i was um able to help my females get work so like the days that um i was on set was like also days that i had to make sure where my other girl was and why she wasn't on the other sets and like find them and make sure they got all their info and it was kind of hard to talk and find where a girl was at when I'm trying to take sex stills at the same time but um yeah when I'm older I, I definitely see well I don't see I could I could see myself going back into agency work but mm-hmm. but I really like real estate as well so like that's uh, something that I'm venturing in and want to like grow and start my portfolio in alright well we're going to start the moment of truth moment of truth is when I ask you well, I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to say something to you. You tell me if it's true. Mm-hmm. 
you say true if it's false you, you got the option of elaborating on why it's false and if you choose not to answer they say you'll pass yeah, alright all right, so we'll start now um, favorite place to skeet on a female is the breast false okay where 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 Probably cream pie coming inside. Is it? <laughs> 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 you already there. <laughs> we, 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 we got a bona fide freak in the building. <laughs> You've had a nut you wish you could get back because the broad was whack. True. Uh. <laughs> Plenty of those. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, I guess yeah, I work with over a thousand women, fifteen hundred women, and um, there's definitely about a good fifty of them that I'm you slept with over a thousand di- uh, between a thousand and fifteen hundred different women. Yeah, so far I'm at about over fifteen hundred scenes as a professional. Jeez. That's not including the content, which is like another two hundred. But um, it's a lot of nuts, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I gotta make sure I continue to drink my protein. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Jeez, you no know, sea moss for the guys. I want to know like what other supplements I take, but sea moss is a good okay. One. Free game, free mm-hmm. game. We can applaud that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you still get you still get joy out of watching your performance. I do, I do. I get. I'm, I'm in love with what I do. So okay. like, I enjoy performing. I enjoy like making, creating some porn for people to masturbate to, and okay, or just marvel at. Some days you just don't feel like getting your rocks off. I would say that's false, man, because <laughs> <laughs> we got a bona fide freaking out of You know, I have to literally force myself to take a day off because I subconsciously will schedule sex. Like I won't I'll be thinking that I have an off day and then I'll get a text message like, Are we still on? And I'm like, Oh yeah, I forgot about it. Yeah, are we still on and stuff like that. So it's just like I'm a nymphomaniac in, in a true sense. Of, okay. Like I love sex. Okay. And um I really have to like take the time to like get my body a rest when it when it calls for one. You gotta you gotta keep yourself healthy on the camera. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. mean as far as your body up to par and things of that nature. How do you find time to work out if you shooting all this? Um, either before and after. You gotta force yourself, you know, like I'm a adventurous introvert, so like even though I'm like to myself yeah. a lot, like I'm always outside and like working on myself. So if I'm not hiking, I'm at the gym, or if I'm not doing those things, I'm reading to like learn something more on the topic. So when I talk about it to people, I don't sound ignorant. Yeah. Yeah. So it's always just like carving yourself to make yourself a little bit more tight. Um, when recognized on the streets, you smile at a person and say, "Yeah, that's me." <laughs> um, do you do you, true. you do yeah, okay? True, so you, true. Look, I, don't, you, I you, won't you, deny it's me. I'll oh, be so like, you oh, look, give me an, the last time you've been recognized. Um, one of the most memorable times was okay. definitely in Cleveland when, like, I didn't I didn't expect to get recognized, uh-huh. and um, I was like at a Fourth of July event, and I was just walking up and down, and like I was. Holding my niece's hand because that's who I go out there to visit. Right. And like I'm walking her and just like showing her around. And like a guy was like, "Hey man, I I know you from somewhere." And he was like, "I was like," and he was with his family. And so I was just like, <laughs> I was just like, it's time to stop this fuckery. I was just like, "Yo, bro, I don't want to like put you on blast." Right. But I was just like. I was like, you probably online a lot. Yeah. And then he thought about it and he was like, oh, he was like, what you doing over here? You know, like yeah. this is Cleveland. Like I thought LA yeah. and I'm just like, yeah, I'm here with my family and like stuff like that. And I mean, I took my mom out to um, a breakfast dinner when I went down there for her birthday last year. And like the waitress came and was like, hey, so everybody here in the restaurant is telling me that you're very famous. And like, <laughs> like, like, like if you don't mind, what do you do? And like, and I'm just like, oh, well. with your mom? What you see? And my mom just smiling, and she loves seeing that. She actually she, she get a kick out of it. Yeah, she if you was a girl, she probably because she but, tried to put yeah. me in entertainment as a diaper baby okay. and like had me get headshots and stuff like that. So you know, I'm like, I got a, I'm sitting on a curve as a little toddler with an afro, and and um, and so she's happy that I actually did do something in entertaining and be something more than just a nine to fiver. Did she? Did did um? Are you surprised with how many people? Watch porn and 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 will let it be known that they know you. I'm not surprised as much anymore. It was more surprising when I was like also being surprised as well. Like when I'll be watching, when like I'll be like, oh, I actually know that person and mm-hmm. stuff like that. When it was like, it was unknown to me. But now it's kind of like this is what people do, and and even more so 
when people say they recognize me, they be like, hey, man, I don't want to blow up your spot. I do know who you are, but, like, you know, just I just want to say, yeah, bro, vibing with you. Like, yeah, you're doing it, man. Like, <laughs> So you have more men that come to let it, uh, not, uh, that let you know that they... Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, I mean, I was in Cleveland. I guess I get recognized more in Cleveland than I think I do, but yeah. um, I was in Cleveland walking with my niece and my sister, and, like, my sister was like, hey, like... That lady is pointing at you, showing her her boyfriend who you are, and oh, I'm shit. just like, oh, okay, well, like, yeah. So it, it comes on both sides. I would think out here though, you get recognized, no? Absolutely. Like uh, I went to the Nipsey Hustle Memorial, and um, and like everybody that I was walking which past. Which memorial? With the memorial when, when when he was buried? No, not that one. Like when he was having this. Um, oh, when they had the, par- the yeah, parade on Crenshaw. Okay. And, um, Crenshaw and um, Slauson. Slauson. Okay. And so, like, when they first put up his mural and everything, uh-huh. and everybody was oh, you talking about when the when the, the event yeah, when the shooting went down? When okay, it first happened. I went up there with Vanna Fox, and everybody was like, "Oh, I know you," and this and this and that, and and it was like, "Oh, you're famous." <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to them? Just what's up and keep it yeah, moving. Yeah, I say what's up and everything like that. And so because we was there for Nipsey. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most yeah. definitely wasn't. Yeah, got, got it. I got it. Yeah. Um, you love the lifestyle of a porn star. I do. Mm-hmm. True. 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 Your homeboys ask you the craziest things when it comes to your career and lifestyle of it. False. Um, you know, they are curious, but they got such a respect for me. They don't even, like, care. that They just, like, they know me so much on the personal side. So what you, okay, so they don't yeah, get into that. Yeah, and even when I'm around them, I'm not, like, Isaiah Max. Right, right, I'm, right. I'm just Isaiah right, and right, stuff right. like that. Like, they call me Zay, and so like, yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, so I they still, don't ask you about, man, you ain't sleep. Well, how was it when you slept with such and such? Uh, yeah. Just... You know, yeah, they'll ask me occasionally. Like, if there was a couple of girls, they'll be like, "Yo, like, like my barber, for example, right. he'll, he'll look at my Instagram. He'd be like, "Yo, man, that girl was hot. Like, like he loves when I shoot black on black porn. He'd be like, "Yeah, that's a girl I could see yeah. myself with." And we'll talk about the girls and like their personality and like, you know, like if they're really cool in person and stuff like that. But um, All right, so that's false. But they actually more so talk about like what I do off camera. Like mm-hmm. yo, like like I got my friend back home into working out and stuff like that. I was like, that's a big contribution to why these girls are attracted to me. Right, 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 right. Um, you check out the female talent you're you're going to perform with um, social media before meeting with them. False. You I, don't. I did that in the beginning, and I learned not to do that. Why? You see their performance, and like you'll see a really good scene that they do, and then you get to them in person, and they're not feeling it that day. Oh, so I've been so disappointed. You don't set a, up yeah, up I, I've been disappointed a lot. Where I'll be like, "Oh, this girl's really gonna put it on me," and then I get there and it's like, "Man." <laughs> so yeah, I I just kind of let it. I don't, to be honest, um, companies don't even tell me who I'm working with anymore because mm. that's not because I'm in such that routine yeah. now of like you don't have to tell me the name of the girl. I don't have a big no list and. Um, and when I'm there, I'm I'm there to work. Like I'm gonna knock it out. Like it don't matter who the girl is, honestly, because I'm not trying to get with her. So I'm like, you can put me with everybody, anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we wrap it up, man, we had a long interview. I didn't realize it was really rolling. But uh, can you let them know what what content you got coming out within the next month or two? Or you can't announce the names yet? Oh yeah, I can, man. Um, well, you know, I just shot for Black Raw yesterday. I can't okay. I can't announce the girls, but it's two very hot girls that I love working with. I'll say one do look like Zendaya, and I'm pretty sure if you if you into porn, you'll probably know which girl I'm talking about. Okay, but um, you know, I have these two scenes coming out that I shot today, and that was with um Jennifer White, and her and I helped a new guy get into the business, right. and so you'll see the nun, the next young star that's coming up. And as well, I work with Richard Mann, who is an OG veteran. Oh, yeah. No, Richard Mann. Yeah, 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 man. yeah, yeah. He played my father today, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and we banged out close. He made your girl uh, tap out. Pinky. <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> when Pinky was in her pride, yeah. Richard Mann had her ass running. Oh, yeah, man. These, these, these guys are studs, man. Yeah. And um, they, they they still give me some of the games. So, yeah, man. That was OG today. And, um, and then, you know, I, I shoot... Just I shot a couple of scenes for Zero Tolerance with um let's see, who did I just recently shoot with? I'm always such on to the next project. Yeah, yeah, I no, kinda, I feel you. I feel you. I just kinda but um, you know, I shot some stuff with Luna Star, I shot some stuff with Adriana Check Chick that I haven't promoted out yet. Um, there's some stuff coming out with um Indica Monroe for like She Loves Black, which I shoot for a lot now. Right. And um there's just yeah, I should I shoot with about 25, 30 girls a month, so it's always something in the airway coming out. I think I'm at about a good 120 scenes so far throughout the year. Mm. 
That's with the pandemic, putting in work, huh? Yeah, man. It's just the pandemic wasn't even that bad for me, man. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> because a lot of the see the problem for male performers is a lot of them can't afford to stay in because of all of the testing and stuff right. like that. So, like when the testing protocols came down, we had to get tested every one to three days. It kind of weeded out a lot of people that yeah, couldn't afford, afford to stay. To for. That's so, crazy. Like I was just off default of yeah. like, yo, you need the job because you're the only one available. Yeah. So I was working. 30, 35 times a month yeah, around that time. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was serotonin depletion, which is something that is not really talked about, but right. it happens. It's like you work so much, you don't have any more serotonin to like be personable. So I was very on autopilot during that right. time of like, you could talk to me and I'll give you a a response to whatever specifically you ask me. But in terms of the extra, like um, me giving you any type of my personality, it just wasn't there. I didn't have the energy to give. Got it. So, like, a lot of times when I was hanging out with my homegirl, Kendra Cole in Vegas, who holds me down out there, um, she knows me on the... She watches my dogs when I'm out, and, like, we, we grew up in this industry together. So, she knows me on a personal level, and I, I came into her place and apologized. I was like, look, like, I'm sorry for how I'm about to act right now, but I just want to be on my own shit. And it was, like, time where usually I'm at home alone doing this, so right. I don't have to explain to anybody. But serotonin depletion gets real, and, like, I just want to make sure... Nobody thinks that I'm having that attitude towards them. Got it. Got it. Got it. You let them know your Instagram and Twitter before we get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Instagram is um, Isaiah, I S I A H underscore Maxwell, like Maxwell's house. Right. And um, my Twitter is Isaiah Maxwell, and that's as well as my OnlyFans if y'all want to see what I do yeah. off camera and behind the scenes. Uh, Isaiah Maxwell, we appreciate you joining us on the Boozy Show. Wish you the best in your future endeavors. It was a great interview, uh, uh, constructive, informative interview. And uh, thank you again for coming on the Boozy Show, man. Man, I know I could talk. Thanks. That's <laughs> all good. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> it's the Boozy Show with Zayda DJ. Zayda DJ. Zayda DJ.